I've got a super fun and easy project that anyone can do indoors. You don't need a studio, even though I'm in studio, and that project is a long exposure portrait. So you're gonna be taking a long exposure of a person and then using your creative abilities to make it as interesting as possible. It's really simple. You can put your camera in manual mode to put in your settings, dial in your settings, or you can put it in shutter priority, select your shutter speed, and uh, if your exposure is too overexposed, then dial it back with some exposure compensation. So I used a three second exposure and I'm going to use my exposure compensation dial to dial it down to make sure that Tony is exposed properly. And once I have that in, I'm also gonna put a delay on my timer so that pressing the shutter button does not make my camera shake all around and make it any shakier than it needs to be. And then I'll be getting into the photo and using my hands to create some interesting images around Tony. As you can see, I'm using a black backdrop. It's not perfect, it's all wrinkly and ugly. That always happens. But I know I'm gonna be crushing the black so that's not gonna be a problem. I've got a black shirt on so I disappear except for my hands. Uh, let's get started, it's just easy. I'm gonna press my shutter button here come around behind Tony. It just requires some trial and error and it really depends on you. So you can ask me specifically which settings I use, but my lighting's gonna be different. I recommend lower light so that you're not blowing out your photo with your long shutter speed. And then also you're gonna wanna play with the motion of your hands or the motion of your model and see what looks best. So if you're moving really quickly in the frame for a long exposure, then it's gonna look more like a blur. You can move and stop and then you'll get a more clear image. You want your subject to stay as still as possible. That's why Tony's perfect. He's like super still, look at him. Did you even move this whole time? No, he doesn't. That's why he's good for this. All right, so let's try another one. I'll press my shutter. And then you can look at your picture and see if you got the results that you want. That's creepy. I have it on shutter priority mode. You can also do it in manual. That's how I shot my first photos. And you can experiment. I'm gonna uh, start with three seconds and it's putting it at F14. My photos were a little bit overexposed so I used some exposure compensation and put it down negative one stop. And I have my ISO as low as it can go which on this camera is 64. Just be very still, as still as you Any can. Any particular expression, just? Um, a little bit wide-eyed, less. Okay, ready? I find that if I touch him too much, I actually shake him because my first attempts, I was covering his mouth and I was moving his head, and then his eyes aren't as in focus. One cool thing about this project, I don't think it has to be perfectly in focus. I'm doing a creepy shoe and it's kind of a surreal look, so I think having it kind of grainy, I even added some grain, makes it look cool, don't you think? Cool. But I don't want to be shaking your head all around so much that I'm losing those beautiful, beautiful eyes. Yeah, don't shake the baby. Don't shake the baby. Let's do it again. You might find that you have to move a little faster because uh, you're not getting enough time with your hands still for them to really convey. So you'll have to experiment. I'm gonna look and see how that one came out. This is what kind of what I imagined. I'm looking at it and imagining my edits. I want it black and white. Look how ghostly my hands look. Finally, my like creepy long fingers come in handy. Okay, I'm gonna move my hands in different ways so you can kind of see how that looks when you have that slow shutter speed. So let's try it again, Tony. Okay, you stay still. How scared should I be? I'd just be normal. I've been trying to do that my whole life. <laughs> so I freeze, move, freeze, move, freeze. You can very distinctly see all the different hands. Let's try it again and I'll do one slow smooth movement and you can show what that looks like. I feel like a beautiful hand dancer. So now you can see it's far more abstract. You can't even necessarily tell that it's hands. And you have one smooth hand rainbow. Let's try something in between.
Now you can see all the hands, but they're far more opaque. You can see right through them. They're not really separated in any way. They're kind of like mushed together. It looks weird. I like it. Tony blinked, which looks insanely creepy. He looks like Raiden from Mortal Kombat, but that's kind of cool. You get a creepy look. I can see my hands are showing up and there's some separation, so I could move them faster if I wanted some blur. On the next picture, that looks very creepy too. I know I'm gonna be putting these in black and white and crushing the blacks. I can see there's some ambient light on my background, so I would wanna kill that, but it's actually on for this making this video. So that's something I'll have to do when I'm just taking the pictures without all you watching. You don't have to be still anymore. I don't really want to. <laughs> so it's that simple. You just need a tripod and your camera. You could even use a cell phone if you have an app that allows you to slow down your shutter speed and some experimentation and creativity. I love it because it's super cold right now. I don't really want to go outside. It's kind of the perfect project. So have fun. Leave a comment down below on some suggestions for other people to try and see you next time. I love it because it's like the one type of modeling I can do. Just don't. <laughs> Don't move. Just don't move and look a little bit creepy and have let your wife strangle you. That's what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs>